So again, my name is Jumani, and I'm one of the data project managers for the Child and Family Data Archive. And um, this webinar is on how to access and use data from the American Indian and Alaska Native Head Start and Family Child Experiences Survey 2019, otherwise known as AAN Faces 2019. This webinar is hosted by the Child and Family Data Archive, Mathematica, and the Office for Planning, Research, and Evaluation within the Administration for Children and Families in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We are joined by Sarah Bernstein of Mathematica and Laura Horde of OPRE. Sarah and Laura will be leading the presentation today, but before we turn the presentation over, I'll briefly let you know about the structure of this webinar. For today's webinar, Sarah will give you an introduction to AIN Faces 2019 and the data set, information on the data file structure and conventions, data user resources, and tips for working with the AIN Faces 2019 data. This will be followed by myself presenting an overview of the Child and Family Data Archive and how to find the AIN Faces 2019 data set on our website. Then Laura will, pre will present the process for accessing these data. And then Sarah will return to discuss resources and upcoming study plans. And then the webinar will close with a Q&A section. And with that, I will hand it over to Laura. I'm sorry, I will hand it over to Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Jumani. So I really appreciate the opportunity to share with everyone today. And I first want to acknowledge our study partners at the Office of Planning, Research and Evaluation within the Administration for Children and Families at the US Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the Child and Family Data Archive. I'd also like to acknowledge the tremendous contribution of the AIA and FACES workgroup, whose members provided guidance on this study and which I'll describe in a moment. Most importantly, I want to acknowledge the 22 Region 11 Head Start programs who participated in AIA and FACES 2019, in particular that they saw the value of continuing to participate in the study as the COVID-19 pandemic started to devastate the country and Native communities disproportionately, and many of whom, as I'll mention later, have seen the value in continuing with the study for a new data collection to understand how families and staff are doing more than 18 months into the pandemic. And for over 50 years, Head Start as a federal program has provided child development and family support services um, starting in 1965 and serving uh, about 30 million children and families since then. Head Start supports children's early learning, health, and their families' well being through a variety of services. As part of its management of Head Start, the federal government divides Head Start programs into 12 regions. 10 of the 12 are geographically defined, and the other two are defined by the populations they serve. Region 11 serves children and families in programs operated by federally recognized American Indian and Alaska Native tribes. Region 11 includes about 145 Head Start programs in 26 states across the United States. So those are the red shaded states on the map. Um, and it serves approximately 20,000 preschool children. The majority of Region 11 Head Start children are American Indian or Alaska Native. AIA and FACES was carried out for the first time in 2015, and AIA and FACES 2019 builds on the success of that study. Relying on the expertise of the AIA and FACES workgroup, which I describe in a moment, AIA and FACES 2019 successfully recruited 22 Region 11 programs to participate in the study following each community's review process and gather data that would help answer high priority questions. Because AIA and FACES 2019 was designed to be similar to AIA and FACES 2015, it provides not only the most current nationally descriptive data for Region 11, but also the possibility of looking at trends over time. More information about these studies can be found, found on ACF study website, um, which will have a QR code for at the end of the presentation. Um, but now I'm going to briefly describe our work group. So the AIA and FACES work group is comprised of members from the four groups you see here. Region 11 Head Start directors, university-based researchers, ACF federal staff, and researchers from the Mathematica study team. The AIA and FACES 2015 work group formed in 2013 to advise on what AIA and FACES 2015 would be about 
how it would be done, and how findings would be shared. Building on that foundation, the 2019 work group advised on updates to study measures, data collection and training procedures, and priorities for sharing findings. So I'll talk briefly about some key features of AIA Enphasis 2019. AIA Enphasis is designed to be representative of all children served by Region 11, both American Indian and Alaska Native children, as well as those who are not American Indian or Alaska Native, even though those who are not AI or AN are a small percentage of the children served. Uh, AIA Enphasis 2019 has several goals to describe the strengths and needs of all children in Region 11, to provide an accurate picture of all children and families served by Region 11, and to understand the cultural and linguistic experiences of Native children and families. To achieve a nationally representative sample of Region 11 as a whole, 22 randomly selected programs were recruited to participate in the 2019 study. For each program, we followed each tribe or village's review process to get permission to conduct study activities and to archive the data for qualified secondary users. We collected data from children, parents, teachers, center directors, and program directors. As you can see in the pyramid here, our goal for these 22 programs was to collect data in 40 centers, 85 classrooms, and, 700, and from 720 children and their parents. Uh, during the program year, some data were collected during fall and spring, while other data were collected only during the spring. As you might expect, the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted some of our data collection plans, and we'll note this as I walk through the next slides. In the fall and spring, children's cognitive skills in language, literacy, mathematics, and executive function and physical development were directly assessed. As you can see from this table note, we were not able to complete the direct assessments in all programs in spring 2020. The data we did collect are available as a supplemental file, which I'll touch on later. Teachers reported on individual children's social emotional skills and parents completed surveys about family, home life, and community. In the spring of the program year, uh, teachers and directors completed surveys about themselves and classroom and program practices, as well as native cultural and language resources. Classrooms were also observed for quality and native culture and language experiences. AIA and FACES 2019 used the Early Childhood Environment Rating Scale revised and the Pre-K Classroom Assessment Scoring System. In addition, observers completed a set of questions about children's exposure to native language and a variety of cultural items in the classroom. As noted, the study was only able to collect classroom observation data in seven of its 22 classrooms, and those data are also available on the supplemental data file as the, the same supplemental file as the uh, spring direct assessment. To capture the pandemic's impact on Region 11 programs and centers, AIA and FACES 2019 included specific questions on the spring 2020 program and center director surveys related to how programs and centers adjusted their services and communications with both families and staff during the pandemic. And you can see some of the topics directors reported on on this slide. Um, in terms of administration characteristics, in both fall and spring, children participated in a 60-minute one-on-one direct child assessment conducted by trained field staff. Assessors uh, used a web-based instrument on a tablet computer. Questions were displayed on their computer, and a second monitor displayed images for the child. Again, we collected only partial child assessment data in the spring. In both fall and spring, teachers had the option of completing the 10-minute teacher-child report, or TCR, online or using a paper instrument. And also in the fall and spring, parents could complete their survey online or by telephone interview, and it took about 30 minutes to complete. The four instruments listed in the table here were administered in spring 2020 only. The 35-minute teacher survey could be done online or using a paper survey. In the seven programs that received the classroom observation, classrooms were observed for about four hours by a trained classroom observer. Directors had the option of responding to a 30-minute survey online or using a paper instrument. So now that you have this high-level overview of the study, um, I'm going to get into some more specifics about the data file and using the data. 
So we'll start by talking about the data file structure and conventions. Uh, we created one child level data file that includes data from fall child assessments, fall and spring teacher child reports and parent surveys and spring teacher center director and program director surveys. The data on this file properly weighted can represent region 11 as a whole. The file contains a set of identifiers uh, or ID variables that uniquely identify each case on the file. For example, each sampled child classroom center program. The file also contains demographic variables such as the child's age, gender, and race ethnicity. We also include composite variables, a series of data flags indicating whether there are completed instruments for the child, um, and weight variables for various types of analyses. The file also contains item level data from the study instruments. For example, individual responses to the items on the fall and spring parent survey and responses to items on the teacher and director surveys. As you see noted on the slide, there are some exceptions. Um, and for those exceptions, we provide composite variables. As mentioned in spring 2020, we collected direct assessment and classroom observation data in seven of the 22 programs prior to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, related closures. Although data from these seven programs do not represent region 11 as a whole, we've prepared a, a data file to support users interested in conducting exploratory analyses of the partial data from spring 2020. Um, we've also prepared an AIA and FACES spring 2020 partial sample data user's manual to describe these components. For this, we created, again, one child level data file that includes data from the two instruments, spring data from the child assessment and from the classroom observation. The file also has a unique child identifier that will allow users to merge on other variables, such as those collected at the child classroom center and program levels found on the full AIA and FACES restricted use file. Certain data that were collected as part of the study are not included on the data file according to agreements with measure developers and publishers. Listed on this slide are the types of data that have been redacted from the data file that's available at the Child and Family Data Archive. Copyright protected items have been redacted from the TCR form, and these redactions are shown in the instrument in Appendix D of the user's manual. Appendix D does not include the items administered to children in the direct child assessments, nor does it include the AIA and FACES 2019 classroom observation protocol forms. However, chapters three and four of the user's manual and the partial sample file user's manual include descriptions of the measures used in the assessments and observations and their administration. In addition, AIA and FACES uses mostly well-known assessments and observation protocols, and general information on these are widely available. In addition, Mathematica has done some work looking at how several of the assessments and protocols perform in AIA and FACES. You can find more details about that on the OPRE study website. There are some item level variables beyond those mentioned here that are not included on the file. Some variables were coarsened to protect confidentiality. For example, teacher race categories with very low incidence were collapsed into an other category. Additionally, some uh, item level information like income is included as a composite variable rather than several item level variables. The composite variable pulls information from multiple income variables to report the information as one categorical variable. The composite variables and scores fall into one of five groups, with the first four listed here and the fifth we'll review shortly. A full list of the variables and scores are found in Chapter 7 of the User's Manual. This is a summary of some of the variables and scores that are available. So child and family characteristics include variables that tap constructs such as race, ethnicity, and age of the sampled child and their mother, whether the child was enrolled in their first or second year of Head Start, uh, mother and father employment and household income. Parent processes and parenting variables cover family child activities, healthcare access, parent depressive symptoms, uh, food security, and household financial strain. Teacher or classroom characteristics are from the teacher survey, 
Um, and those variables capture key aspects of teachers, such as depressive symptoms and teacher beliefs, um, and about classrooms, including class size and child-adult ratios. Again, there's additional information about classrooms from the classroom observation data that are included on the partial sample data file. And finally, program characteristics include variables derived, uh, sorry, derived variables focused on things like teacher turnover and match between teacher and family language use. As described in chapter seven of the user's manual, the data file contains a number of composite variables and assessment and TCR scores in addition to the survey item level data. There are really almost an infinite number of variables and scores that could be created using the data. We give priority to variables or constructs that use data from multiple items or sources and that require considerable effort to create. Some variables use a combination of data from survey instruments and from a proprietary survey management system. For example, children's age and sex use data from this system and data from the parent survey. Special statistical methods and software are needed to develop some of the child assessment scores, for example, item response theory or IRT analyses for some assessment scores. Um, even with this knowledge and software, certain key variables could not be created by users, again, because of restrictions on sharing individual item level data from copyright protected measures. Additionally, using these variables on the file allows for comparability with other AIA and FACES reporting and across data users. The file includes many different scores based on children's performance on the direct child assessments listed here. In particular, for language literacy and mathematics measures, we uh, include raw, standardized, and IRT-based or W scores. Which scores to use will depend on your research question and the type of analysis you'll be doing. Raw scores such as counts uh, or averages for the items a child completes as indicators of absolute performance. Standardized scores allow for comparisons of an individual's performance relative to the others of the same age. And IRT or W scores are estimates of children's absolute performance if they had taken all the items in the measure. More information is available in the user's manual. And again, the fall direct assessment data is on the main data file. The partial spring data is on the partial sample data file. A set of raw or criterion scores of children's cognitive skills around emergent literacy and social emotional development, including social skills, problem behaviors, and approaches to learning were derived from responses to the TCR. Scores capturing children's social skills and problem behaviors are derived from several established rating scales for young children. Composite scores were calculated as the sum of item responses for social skills and problem behaviors. Um, and they indicate the extent to which given statements reflect a child's behavior. Similarly, teacher reports of children's emergent literacy were added uh, with some scores providing a count of the child's early literacy skills. Teacher reported scores on approaches to learning were calculated as a mean of items and indicate the frequency with which given statements reflect a child's behavior. Assessor reported scores of children's cognitive and social behaviors, such as attention and sociability during their direct assessment, included both raw and standard scores derived from the lighter three examiner rating scale. The standard scores have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, indicating performance relative to same age peers. Um, the study uh, follows certain conventions when naming and labeling variables and assigning missing variable codes. Most variable names use a standard set of prefixes. The first character represents the source instrument, such as the parent survey. The second character in the prefix represents the wave in which the information was collected. So one for fall 2019 and two for spring 2020. You can use this to identify the source and data collection wave for each of the variables. So for example, a variable name beginning with P1 tells you that it came from the fall 2019 parent survey. For survey or interview items, the rest of the variable name identifies the item number or source, uh, or sorry, in the source instrument. So for example, P1D01 is based on item D1 in the fall parent survey, um, which asks how often someone in the family reads to the child. In the case of constructed or derived variables, um, the rest of the variable name is typically a shortened description of the construct represented by the variable. 
So for example, P1 HH size uh, is number of people in the household and it's derived from responses to the fall 2019 parent survey. There are a few exceptions that don't follow these conventions, including identifiers and analysis weights. Um, in terms of missing data, there are three sources of missing data in the study, unit non-response, item non-response, and legitimate skips. Unit non-response occurs when an entire instrument is missing for a case. For example, um, the parent of a sample child doesn't complete a parent survey in the fall. Unit non-response in AI and phases 2019 data is addressed through the application of the analysis weights. Item non-response occurs when there's missing data on individual items that should have been responded to within a given instrument. Respondents may refuse to answer a question, state that they don't know the answer, or they may simply skip the question. We generally have little item non-response. Um, AI and FACES uses three codes to distinguish the three reasons for missing data, so refused, don't know, or not ascertained. Um, there are also items that are only answered based on a prior response or condition. So for example, parents may be asked for more detailed information on the language spoken in the home if they first indicate a language other than English is spoken in the home. The study assigns a different code for such data to distinguish them from other types of missing data. You should determine how you want to handle data involving legitimate skips. By reviewing the instruments in Appendix D to identify legitimate skips, um, you can figure out how to handle these and how you handle them can affect your findings. For example, if you're interested in the percentage of all children whose parent usually speaks to them in a native language at home, you simply calculate the percentage from responses to question D10 in the parent survey. You'll find that many of children's parents report speaking to them in a native language. However, to answer this question correctly, you have to take into consideration that those parents who reported speaking only English in the home in item D7 would have skipped item D10. Um, so if we account for that legitimate skip and include those parents in our denominator, we see a much smaller percentage of children's parents report using a primary uh, native language as the primary language in their home how you handle missing data should be aligned to your research question. More information on the instruments and what was collected can be found in the user's manual. So let's turn to some resources that are available to provide you with the information you need to analyze the data accurately and to publish from this complex data set. The user's manual is the primary resource for information about the study design and its execution. The manual includes useful information about the organization and structure of the data file and its use. Um, in the section on data file content, structure, and use, we describe considerations for combining data across AIA and FACES 2019 and FACES 2019. Users interested in combining data sets should read this section carefully to understand the types of combined analyses the studies can and cannot support. So for example, due to a very large design effect, users should not combine the data sets to get a picture of AIA and children in regions one through 11. Um, the data files include many scores that were developed from responses to the direct child assessments and teacher child report and variables and scores derived from responses to survey items and classroom observations. The manuals describe how each was constructed and offers guidance on which assessment score to use for di different research questions. Um, regardless of your experiences using data from large-scale studies such as AIA and FACES 2019, you should begin by reading the Getting Started section of the user's manual. It provides a brief introduction to the study and directs the reader where to go to find more information on some of the major technical issues researchers will confront when working with these data. The partial sample file user's manual is structured similarly to the main user's manual, and it's the primary source of information about the spring direct child assessment and classroom observation components. The user's manual can be downloaded from the child and family data archive. The user's manual also includes six appendices that provide additional information about AIA and FACES 2019 and the data on the data file. The first four of these appendices, so A through D, focus on the study design and in particular, its instruments and measures. 
Uh, in particular, Appendix C contains an instrument content matrix for each of the study instruments, and it's an easy way to identify the types of measures and constructs that are included in the study. While information in the content matrices provides a way to quickly identify what kinds of information might be answered using the data, researchers should look at the actual items in the study instruments and be familiar with the different standardized instruments that are used in AI and Thesis 2019. Appendix D includes a copy of each survey, TCR, and interview instrument that was used. Again, copyrighted instruments uh, or scales are not included per agreements with the instrument or scale developers and publishers. Chapter three of the user's manual details the original measures. For each variable on the file, the codebook in Appendix E lists the variable name and label, the data format and type, and includes a set of descriptive statistics. Researchers can review the codebook to guide analysis and note when values obtained in your analysis do not align with the data. However, the codebook is not intended for reporting. Appendix F includes detailed information about each of the composite variables and assessment scores that are listed in the tables in Chapter 7 of the user's manual. It's structured with background and weighting information first, um, followed by child assessments and um, parent reported teacher uh, parent, teacher, and director reported data, I should say. So in addition to the user's manual, the OPRE study website includes several types of reports using data from AIA and FACES uh, 2015 and 2019. First, we have study reports that have a set of data tables that provide information from all aspects of the study. So parent surveys, direct child assessment data, surveys of staff. These reports include a slightly more detailed introduction to the study design and methods. Webinars such as this one are recorded and posted for future viewing, along with webinar slides. We also have developed two types of shorter products, one type that's shorter than the study report um, or the data table report, relying more on figures to tell the story of a specific topic with greater context. And the second type of shorter report uh, would report on psychometric properties of the child assessment measures to understand how they work with young Native children. In addition to the psychometric reports, then, you can also find information on some study measures, such as the Native Culture and Language in the Classroom Observation, or NCLCO, which was developed for, N for AIA and FACES. Um, so, for example, on the OPRE website, there's a separate document about the NCLCO. Finally, AIA and FACES at a glance products are where you can find one pagers with graphics and short text as a way to get a quick picture on a smaller set of findings with key takeaway points. Um, you can find all these products by Googling OPRE, AIA and FACES. Um, to find the website, we will also include a QR code towards the end of the presentation. So I will touch briefly on some tips around working with the data, um, given its complex sample design. There are several features of this study and most large-scale national studies that are important to keep in mind when considering to use weighted or unweighted data in your analysis. So AIA and FACES 2019 is designed to produce national estimates for Region 11 Head Start children. Analysis is supported at the child level. It's a sample survey, so it's not a census of Region 11 Head Start programs, centers, classrooms, or children. Only a small portion of each of these populations was selected and participated. The study is not a simple random sample of Region 11 Head Start programs, classrooms, and children. It uses a complex design that includes multi-levels of sampling and stratification to reduce the cost of the study and to ensure that the samples are representative of the population from which they're drawn. Programs, classrooms, and children did not have an equal probability of selection. Um, additionally, not all program staff, parents, and children who were sampled or asked to complete a study instrument did so. So there was unit non-response, which varied um, by instrument. And finally, children who left their Head Start program after the fall data collection were not eligible for the spring follow-up. So analysis weights adjust for different features of complex sample designs, like the one used in AI and FACES, um, and for non-response and sample attrition that's inherent in any national longitudinal study. So they adjust for the fact that not all units had an equal chance of selection to the sample. 
They also adjust for differences in non-response among certain groups of the population and for sample attrition. They can help to reduce the potential for bias when there's differential non-response or attrition. In AIA and FACES 2019, the basic analysis weight, inverse probability of selection, is adjusted for non-response at each stage of sampling and for instrument or unit non-response. Analysis weights adjust for unit non-response, um, and we examined non-response bias at the program and child levels. The child level non-response bias analyses include staff survey non-response, parent survey non-response, and combinations of parent survey and TCR non-response, because again, all analyses are at the child level. Um, generally, we feel that the risk for non-response bias is sufficiently mitigated if researchers use the appropriate weight, but chapter six of the user's manual includes more detail for those interested. The weights don't adjust for item non-response, so different imputation methods would be needed to adjust for item level missing data. Weights are used when estimating characteristics of the population, which is the primary goal of the study. We're not interested in the characteristics of the 22 programs or the 720 children in the sample per se, but in characteristics of the population of Region 11 Head Start children and their families, classrooms, and programs. The data collected from the sample um, cases when used with the appropriate analysis weights produce reliable estimates for the population. Chapter six in the user's manual includes the list of weights with the sources and waves, as well as guidance on selection. First and most important, the weight you choose should support the analysis that's required to answer your research question. For example, thinking about what data will be used and from which sample and source instruments, and does the analysis focus on a single time point or on changes over time? Answering these questions will help you decide which weight is best for your purposes, you won't always find a weight that perfectly fits your needs. In many cases, you'll have to decide between two or more weights, basing your decision on several factors, such as how much missing data are acceptable, how important it is to have full information, even if the number of cases must be reduced to do so. As mentioned, um, it's a sample survey that we use and the data collected are used to estimate population characteristics. Standard errors are a measure of the variability of estimates. Um, and a standard error indicates how close an estimate derived from one sample is to the actual value in the population. The smaller the standard error, the more precise the estimate. Standard errors are also used when testing research hypotheses, such as uh, characteristics of two or more groups of children and relationships between two or more variables. Because standard errors play such an important role in research, it's important that they're accurate and that they capture the key features of the sample design. Many of the standard procedures found in commonly, commonly used statistical packages assume that the data are from a simple random sample where the cases are assumed to be independent from one another and that every case had an equal probability of being selected. Uh, classrooms and children in the AIA and FACES sample are not independent given the clustered nature of its design. So for example, classrooms are clustered in programs and centers, children are clustered in classrooms. Um, and not all sampling units have the same probability of selection. Thus, standard procedures are not appropriate for estimating standard errors generated from the complex sample design used in the study. Software packages designed for simple random samples would tend to underestimate the standard errors for estimates derived from the data. Using inaccurate standard errors when testing research hypotheses can lead to identifying statistically significant results where none are present or vice versa. Using the correct standard error will help to reduce the chances of type one and type two error. Section D on variance estimation in chapter six of the user's manual includes the specifications and code that you'd use to calculate Taylor series standard errors in Sudan and SAS. I am going to turn things back over to Jumani to talk about um, accessing the data through the archive. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to provide an overview of the Child and Family Data Archive and how to find the AIN FACES 2019 data set on our website. So the Child and Family Data Archive is supported by a contract from OPRE and housed at, the, at ICPSR within the University of Michigan. It is the place to discover, access, and analyze data on young children, their families and communities, and the programs that serve them. Users are able to access over 300 data sets 
um, with the ability to analyze selected data sets online. Users can also search and compare variables and peruse data related publications. And of course, user support is available to assist users in finding and obtaining data. Um, the web, the website is, uh, this website is CF Data's um, main public face. And through the website, researchers, policymakers, and other users can explore data, learn more about child care and early education and research, and discover the training opportunities presented by CF Data. We will let you explore um, the different options of the, the website um, on your own. And um, to access the AIN Faces 2019 data, visit the Child and Family Data Archive website at childandfamilydataarchive.org. To find the study, enter the study title or acronym in the search box highlighted by the red oval and hit return. On the search results page, click on the AIN Faces 2019 study title here shown at the top of the search results list to be connected to the study homepage. Here's a screenshot of the AIN Faces 2019 homepage. The homepage is where you will access the data and find important information about the study. The study homepage opens with the at-a-glance tab active, highlighted by the red oval on the left. And this is where you will find a summary about the data and information on the study's design, sampling, data collection period, and more. The study homepage is also where users can search and view publications based on the use of the AIN Faces 2019 data. See the data related publications tab highlighted by the red oval on the right. We encourage researchers to read other publications that have been already published from analyses of these data. Also on the study homepage, as you scroll down um, on that at a glance tab are the restrictions and special requirements for requesting access to the AIN FACES 2019 data. Please follow the information presented here, including reading carefully the application guide, the best practices for working with the AIN FACES 2019 data, and the AIN FACES 2019 data application protocol. Using the variable search tab on the study homepage, highlighted by the red oval, users, users can explore the data at the variable level. Here, users can search for and compare variables within the AIN FACES 2019 data. Simply enter words or strings that relate to your measures of interest in the search box, um, which is highlighted, and the, the search results will return a list of variables related to your search term, including information on the variable name, label, question text if it's available, and um, the variable type, and the associated data set by data set number. The variable level search feature is another great way to identify variables of interest in addition to exploring the study codebook, user guide, and other documentation. On the data and documentation tab of the homepage, you can download the individual doc documentation files. Since the AIN FACES 2019 data are restricted access, only the documentation can be downloaded. On this tab, you'll also be able to preview the study user guide and codebooks before downloading the documentation to your computer. To download all the documentation files at one time, you can use the download drop-down menu highlighted above the data and documentation tab. While users may preview and download the public documentation located on the data and documentation tab, a restricted data application is required for users to gain access to the restricted data and all of the study documentation. All the files in the AIN FACES 2019 data are restricted use and that's to protect the confidentiality um, and privacy of the study respondents. To begin your application, click on the access restricted data button highlighted here and then follow the instructions. Um, to complete and complete the sections that are shown next. So when you click on that access restricted data button on the, that I showed on the prior slide, you will see the guidelines for applying for restricted data shown above. Um, the first paragraph and special requirements paragraph are the same information in the restricted field on the at a glance tab. This box also identifies general requirements to access the data, for example, the project description, IRB approval, security plan, and, and, more that will need, and more that will need to be provided through the online application portal. Remember, AIN FACES 2019 has special requirements for researchers interested in accessing the data, and these requirements also need to be met. 
And then once you click continue at the bottom, you will be taken to um, the, you'll be taken directly to the application to request the AIN Phrases 2019 data. You can download and read the data use agreement before uh, you begin. And uh, remember to visit the Child and Family Data Archive website to request access to these data. You, if you experience issues while completing your application or if you have general questions about the study, archive staff are available to assist you. Just email us at cfdata-help at umich.edu with your questions and we'll post our email, at, our email is posted at the end of the presentation. And I will now turn the presentation over to Laura. Great, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna speak with you about the background on data access. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, what are the considerations for AI and FACES data sharing? The AI and FACES work group said that making the data available was a priority. So we worked to make that so for both AI and FACES 2015 and now for 2019. We know that there are tribal concerns about how data would be used and by whom. The requirements to access the data are based on agreements made between the data collection team at Mathematica and the tribal IRBs governing the communities in which data were collected. Tribal review of some kind is standard operating procedure in most, if not all, tribal research partnerships. So this requirement aligns with best practices for conducting research with tribal communities. We'll talk about the resulting additional requirements in future slides. Next slide, please. There are multiple levels of data protection for AI and FACES. The communities and programs knew about the plans for data sharing with a restricted use data set, and the communities, programs, and survey participants were informed that personally identifiable information is stripped from the data, including names and tribal affiliations for all study participants, as well as the identity of study programs and participating tribal communities. It's important to note that in working with tribal communities, the research process is not just about the individual's but also the community as a participant in the study. Informed consent or approval takes a broader level for the data protections and agreement from communities on the study, data ownership, and data use. AIN FACES established an approach to honor tribal practices for conducting research and determining a way to support data use given the multiple diverse communities on a national scale. Next slide, please. Um, so the data committee is a critical element of data, data access agreements with tribes participating in the study and aligns with the tribal review practices when conducting research with tribal communities. In place of each tribal IRB reviewing applications for access to the data and then reviewing all of the publications and presentations that come from researchers analysis, the data committee will provide that review. These reviews are intended to assist researchers to use the data correctly so that the findings from this analysis are accurate and any conclusions that are drawn can be supported with the data and reflect appropriate tribal context. Next slide. Data transparency is incredibly important and our goal really is to share back the research findings with tri tribal programs and communities. Each year we send back to Region 11 grantees a list of who has access to the data and all publications and presentations that have come from it. Um, as you've heard, the data and family, uh, the Child and Family Data Archive maintains a list of the publications um, and we also encourage others to, um, to look for uh, additional information um, that is available publicly on the OPRE website. Next slide, thanks. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about access requirements and procedures. Next slide. Um, there are many roles for data access, including for the Child and Family Data Archive, for you as the researcher, and then also for the AI and FACES Data Committee. The AI and FACES Data Committee is intended to assist researchers to use the data with consideration for tribal context from which they came. The feedback that the committee provides is intended to aid the researcher. It's not intended to infringe in any way on academic freedom or to limit researchers to a specific line of inquiry. Next slide, please. So here's a pictorial of the data access steps. We'll walk through a little bit of these steps in upcoming slides, but if you wanna spend more time reviewing this picture, you can find it on the data application protocol document. Next slide, please. So this is the data homepage, which you've already seen. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom at the uh, scroll, scroll to the bottom of this, you'll see the special requirements, which has already been shown to you, which includes where the data application guide and best practices document that you should review are. 
Next slide, please. So overview of the application materials. Um, you're gonna need to list the names and affiliation of your team members. You're gonna need to create and submit a research plan to the AIN FACES Data Committee for review. The research plan will include your research questions, how the data will be analyzed, how findings will be disseminated. If you decide once you've been working on this that you have um, come up with new questions, you'll then need to resubmit um, to the data committee any changes that you've made in your plans. Um, you're going to agree when you're submitting this application materials, you're going to agree to send to the committee any manuscripts or presentations prior to publication or presentation. The application also requires evidence of research teams prior experience conducting research with tribal programs or communities, or if you're going to consult with um, folks that um, have experience if the team does not currently. So next slide, please. Um, so what do we mean by researcher experience? Researchers will need to show evidence demonstrating that the PI or the senior member of the research team has prior experience conducting research with tribal programs. Um, evidence of this experience may be highlighted in a bio sketch or CV, for example, publications, research projects, service on work groups or advisory panels. Or if the PI or team does not have prior experience in research with tribal communities, the application must describe the plan for engaging others who do have this experience. And this could be researchers or uh, tribal community partners. And you'd list their names or affiliations and their relevant experience and how your, con co your consultation with them has helped to influence the planned research project. Next slide, please. So also, also required is the signed acknowledgement for the AIN FACES data access. This acknowledgement includes a review of the best practices for AIN FACES tribal um, data. Um, and it included within that that you would be um, asked to read. Um, there's two documents to read, and then there's a, a list of additional optional readings. Next slide, please. So this is um, what's included in the data access acknowledgement. Um, that, so you would initial each of these bullets and then sign and date the entire document. You're going to find this form in the data application protocol document. Next slide, please. On this slide, you can see a list of required application materials. Um, we've talked about many of these. After you submit your research and dissemination plan to the AIN Data Committee, the committee review will result in one of two outcomes. First outcome being that you get a letter stating that you've met requirements. Second, a letter stating that you have not met requirements. If you don't meet requirements, a letter will be provided to you explaining why the things, why the requirements have not been met. Um, and the feedback is really intended to help researchers create better research plans with AI and FACES 2019 data. It's not limiting you from resubmitting. Um, it's really trying to address the concerns of the data committee. Next slide, please. Okay, so there's a lot more information that can be found on the Child and Family Services, Child and Family Data Archive, as well as AI and FACES study page on the OCARI website. And these QR codes um, are to help you get there. Next slide, please. If you have questions about your, uh, about your research and are submitting the plan, send your questions to AIN underscore OPRE underscore data at acf.hhs.gov. And then if you happen to have questions about the data itself, please send your questions to uh, faces hyphen AIN faces hyphen help at mathematica hyphen mpr.com. Um, and now I'm passing it back to Sarah. Thanks. Um, so I'm excited to share that um, additional data collection work is ongoing. Um, so there's an extension of the study currently underway. We went back to the 22 programs that participated in 2019-2020. Um, uh, and um, 18 of those 22 are participating in data collection again in this program year, 2021-22. Um, some programs did decline, and in others, um, we weren't able to secure the necessary approvals in time for data collection. Um, uh, parents and teachers are being asked to report about themselves and about the study children. Um, the instruments are really focused on capturing how families are doing, uh, how families and staff, I should say, are doing a year and a half into the pandemic. Um, and as with the previous two rounds, work group members collaborated closely on updates to the measures. Um, pending OMB approval, the data collection will continue into spring 
where again, parents and teachers will be asked to report about themselves and study children. Um, and we'll also have center and program director surveys as well. More to come. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so um, now at this time, uh, we're going to address um, some questions that have come in. And so uh, one question we have is um, when reporting data on teachers, for example, teacher depression, as it is measured at child level, um, can you explain that? And then can we say lead teachers report varying levels of depression, uh, mild 26%, et cetera, et cetera, or is it measured at child level, um, or, or as it's measured at child level, do we need to report it differently? Um, I can take that one. So when you report data from um, especially teacher and program and center director surveys, you do back yourself sometimes into somewhat awkward language because you do need to say, um, so 26% of children's teachers. It's always children's something um, because it's at the child level. So um, you do have to talk about your findings a little bit differently. You wouldn't say, you know, X percent of teachers. Um, um, another question we have is, is there a cost for user support when we access um, the data? Um, and I can take that. Um, no, as, um, so as a, um, if you have um, like a membership with ICPSR, then um, no, you should be able to communicate with us. Um, there, there isn't a cost for that. Um, another question is um, researcher experience. I don't have specific research experience with tribal communities over the years. I have co-presented and published with, uh, with members of a variety of native communities. Should I outline this experience in my application? I would say yes. And I mean, I think that this is a, um, a great opportunity to actually use that, um, the email to send a question just stating that um, over to the, um, the AIN FACES research plan and submitting. It's the AIN um, underscore OPRE underscore da data at acf.hhs.gov. And, you know, I would send a question. Um, and to, to be able to know, provide your information and, and see what um, the next steps might be. Um, great, and um, I just wanted to um, amend what I, had, I said before. So there's actually, not only is there not a cost for members, but even there's no cost for user support um, or data access for anybody. Um, just wanted to make that clear. Um, so another question we have is, um, is there a simple list of the variable of each data set? I see on the CF data website, all the items, but I just want to glance at a list of variables to see. Um, as it is now, there are over 2000 items and I can't read through all of them. Um, so yeah, so you can, when you look at the, um, uh, when you look at the, the variable tab, uh, you can look at the, you can look at the variables for like a specific data set on our website. Um, I, yeah. I, um, I can add a little bit, Jamani. So there are a lot of variables. There are a tremendous number of variables on the data sets um, because we report most things at the item level unless they're copyrighted or they need to be coarsened. So if you want something that's maybe a little bit less overwhelming, you might want to start with the content matrices that are, um, in the user's manual as an appendix, and then kind of search for your items from there as opposed to starting at the item level, which is gonna be the most level of detail and, and sounds like it might be a little bit much for what you're looking for right now. Okay, um, another question is, I'm applying for the data access of 2015. Do I need to submit a different application for data access for 2019? So I'm not sure from the ICPSR standpoint, but certainly from the data committee, um, because that would be considered a change. You would want to let them know what your plans are um, and what your questions are and have they changed. And if they haven't, then that's fine too. But you just you would definitely want to let the data committee know. Um, another question is, were the observation 
um, were the observation of classroom interactions uh, videotaped? They were not. And um, is it possible to aggregate the data on classrooms, families, or teachers at the state level? Um, we don't include state on the data set um, to sort of protect the confidentiality of, um, of the programs and communities. So it would not be possible to aggregate up beyond the program level or, or, the, or the region level, I guess I should say. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, and so and then the next question is, can you show the contact emails again? So um, with that, um, yes, we have the contact. Um, you can access our archive at childandfamilydataarchive.org and email us at cfdata-help at umich.edu. Um, and we are actually at time for the webinar. Um, however, if you uh, submitted questions that we were not able to answer within time, um, you can either email us at this email or um, we can also um, find, um, since, um, since you registered, we can also um, find your contact information through the registration. Um, thank you so much for attending the webinar. Um, and as I mentioned, um, we will be posting a recording of the webinar to our video resources page within a few weeks.